Hello. In this video, we're going to go through um, how to set up Grid World in TextPad. I don't think TextPad is the best choice for setting up Grid World. However, um, it can be done. There might be another way to do this, but this is the way I figured out myself. So, here we go. First thing we want to do is just make sure everyone knows what Grid World is. Grid World is the case study associated with the AP Computer Science Examination. Um, it was included to ensure that students have experience using a, a program that consists of many classes and documentation and such. It actually replaced an older case study called the Marine Biology Case Study. If you're preparing for the exam and you look at some of the older exams, you'll find the Marine Biology Case Study in there. Don't worry about that. It's the old case study. It's no longer used. Um, they now use a grid rule case study. So here's the website. So we're under the Computer Science A case studies, and if you scroll down, you'll see the code, the manual, um, the various parts of the manual, the appendices. You're going to need to download this code and put it somewhere. Um, I do recommend printing out the manual as well as the appendix. The reason why is because as you're working through your code, it's really good to have that off to the side so you can look at it um, in hard form. Also, in the exam, you're given a copy of the appendix, so practicing using a hard copy of that while you're actually just doing your day-to-day -day work is, is a step in the right direction in terms of preparation. Um, a number of students in the past I found have run out of time and it's because I think in part they're, they're busy looking through their appendix not knowing where to look. Okay, so I'm going to pull up TextPad here and what you'll see is that I have Bug Runner loaded. Um, Bug Runner is a file that's contained within the Grid World package. So just to show you this, if I go File Open, if I look under you have a folder called projects and you have your first project in a file called bug runner. Okay. If I try and run this right now um, by hitting control one, I get a whole bunch of errors. Okay. Um, and if you take a look at the nature of these errors, what you see, if I scroll up here, you see that it does not exist. It's talking about all these different packages that don't exist. The reason why it's telling you these packages don't exist is because the grid world case study is dependent on a large number of classes that have been pre-written. They're contained in what's called a jar file. A jar file is an executable file that contains a number of class files. What we need to do is we need to make sure that this program can access that jar file. Now, if you're using something like Eclipse or JCreator, in that first step, what you do is you, in, when you're developing your workspace or project, you tell it where it can get this resource. But it, TextPad doesn't have that ability. So what we need to do is we need to modify what's called our class path. This is an environment variable inside Windows. Now just a word of warning here, be very, be very careful as you go through this step-by-step -step process because if you make a mistake here, it could cause some larger problems on your computer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to look at where I've actually downloaded this grid world information. So all my grid world code is in here and I see that there's my grid world jar file. If you're using a newer version of Windows, um, they they don't you know they put kind of this user-friendly interface up here. If you click on the folder, you get that actual link, and you want to copy that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to come down into your Start button. And I think my Start button is actually off the screen here, so you can't see it, but we'll do this anyways. Select Start, and there's a bar at the bottom of your Start. And if you type in Environment Variables you get an option called edit environment variables for your account. We select that and you get this information up. What we want to modify is the class path. So if we select class path, we're going to select edit. Um, and then I'm going to go to the very end of the line and I'm going to put a semicolon. Now again, at this point you don't want to make a mistake. So if you think you've made a mistake or something, just go click cancel, start again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that the Explorer link that I had, that I copied, and now I'm going to add to the end of it backslash gridworld.jar. So this tells me where that the gridworld.jar file is actually in the class path. Now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK and minimize this and I'm back in my text pad. I'm going to take a little risk here. I haven't actually tested this before doing this. I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I'm going to try and build it and see if it finds it right away. So let's see. There you go. So I don't need to reload it for it to know this. But what I've done now is I've actually told the Windows system that any anything that's running, it can always access that grid world jar file. So 
now you're good to go. If you hit Control 2, you'll find your grid world will pop up. Again, just a quick little breakdown of this screen here. Um, we have three, three buttons along the bottom with the scroll bar. We have a grid. We won't worry about the toolbar along the top right now. What we essentially do is introduce actors onto this grid. Um, actors can be bugs, rocks, flowers. They're basically any type of character that has a behavior. And every time I hit step, it causes every actor to make some behavior which is dictated by its code. Now, people often get tired of hitting steps, so they hit run, and that just continually presses the step button and you can modify the speed accordingly. So I can make it go faster, I can make it go slower, I can stop this. Important at this point, play around, experiment. Go onto the screen here and you'll notice that if you click on the screen you can you can add different things on there. So I can add a flower, I have to pick a color of that flower, let's make it blue. I could add uh, a rock. I could do things like if I click on this flower I can do different things. One thing that is useful is remove self from grid. Let's put a rock there and let's see what happens now. Ooh, a rock. Let's make the rock green. So now I've hit step. The bug does something else. So grid world is all about modifying the code to change the behavior of these various bugs. Good luck.